on this Resurrection Sunday, I want to simply pose the question and simply ask, is it worth him dying? Yeah. Yeah. Brother Richardson, when I think of the Resurrection, I know through study and conviction of my spirit that it is a pinnacle of our faith. Yeah. Our entire faith belief rests on the fact that our Savior Jesus Christ was indeed resurrected. Yes, he died. Yes, he was in fact dead. But unlike any other person, he was resurrected. Nothing else matters when the resurrection of our Lord is paramount. But when I actually look at the horrific details of how Jesus was crucified and and what he went through to get to the resurrection, don't you know, on the inside of my spirit, I cringe. Not only due to the brutality uh, that's involved, but I cringe because of our response to the resurrection more than 2,000 years later. So I have to ask, Asbury, i got to ask this morning, is it worth him dying? If Jesus walked the earth today, took a look at the division among the church, all the various denominations as we go up and down the road that that pick and choose what they want to follow in the faith. And if he saw the reckless living by our youth and the nonchalant attitudes by our elders, if, if he looked at the wickedness among his people, not in the world, but in the church, if he looked at the ruthlessness of our actions, I know he would not be proud of what we've done since the resurrection. As Barry, if he stepped into your house, would he be pleased with what you've done since his sacrifice on Calvary? Not, not when so many of us wear our faith like a loose garment, putting it on when convenient and taking it all back to serve. Many of us don't even read the Bible for ourselves and only digest what a television preacher tells us. Is it worth Uh, Asbury, I know he did not take abuse from Roman soldiers so we can have chicken dinners and fish fries. I, I truly don't believe he stood silent in an unjust court with an unfair trial convicted by the church he was trying to save just so we can kill each other over songs. He, he did not hold his word, Sister Gladys, through that entire ordeal and only have seven sayings at the cross just so we can have church meetings going. That's right. He did not uh, stay on that cross just so we can act like he never existed. Folk telling me I'm, I'm not religious, but I'm spiritual. Telling me I don't go to church, but I believe in God. I don't believe in giving to no church. Who, who you think are you fool? It ain't worth him dying for. We must remember as them. He didn't die for men's death. He didn't die for women's money. And let me burst the bubble. He did not die for pastor's anniversary. He, he, he didn't die so you can highlight a, a bunny rabbit and not the beloved sin. But, but he died so we can have life and have it more abundantly. He died so we can have eternal salvation. He died because the, when the devil tried to prove human beings were selfish, Jesus said we were caring and loving individuals. He died so the kingdom of God will be made real on this earth. He died so we can have new life in him. That's why, that's why when I really think about it, when I really think about why he did it and who he did it for, I just can't help myself. So I, I'll say to you, Asbury, I'm glad he died. He died. I'm so glad he died to save me from eternal admission. So, so, so I can't be shooting bougie with it this morning. So, so guess what? I won't. I, I, I can't take it for granted. I, and all that he is and everything he needs me to be. I can't act like that crucifixion. I can't act like that burial. I can't act like that resurrection doesn't mean anything to me. Listen, I can't over into, uh, intellectualize this thing or even try to dumb it down for human understanding. I won't pretend that it did not happen because I'll never shout forget what the Lord has done 
from me. I never want you to regret dying on the cross. So, in Matthew's account of this breathtaking and life changing event, we find ourselves assembled at the tomb where Jesus presumably lay dead. A few hours after the crucifixion, there were standing as mourners at the graveside Mary Magdalene and another woman named Mary. Uh, where were the men in this chair? I just see the women. Well, who were these women, Pastor? Well, Mary Magdalene is one of the many women who ministered to Jesus in his life's ministry. She supported him in all that he did, even to the very end. The other Mary in the text was Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, also a great supporter of Jesus. Neither could believe the same man who did so much good for people was now killed by the ones he tried to help. We learned throughout the scriptures that leading up to the tomb, we recognize the dehumanizing crucifixion of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It was where hundreds gathered at Calvary to witness the brutal and slow execution of one who came so that you might have life and have it more abundantly. As we set up the text this morning, we must go back and understand when Jesus was on Calvary's cross, he was getting ready for completion to occur in the earth. Watch this aspect. Understand this point. That Calvary is a place of public humiliation. What was going on there was nothing too kind. Too many times we paint pictures of Jesus on the cross being a handsome individual with nice hair, beautiful eyes, uh, and, and a nice clean body. But you need to know today, his eyes were swollen. He had a crown of thorns on his head. There was blood streaming down every part of his body. This, our dear Savior, did not look like a handsome man when he was beat up by a Roman soldiers. He was there almost barely clothed, defecated on himself because he was hung up from morning through afternoon. You mean to tell me we always got to have a picture of perfect of Jesus? Uh-uh. He was bloody. He was beaten. He was bruised up there on Calvary. He wasn't a model in a magazine, but he looked beaten and bruised. It was a place of public humiliation. What was going on on Calvary was not too kind at them. To take criminals up to Calvary, to be crucified, would be considered the worst thing you could endure. But even in this place of public humiliation and torment, my God can still make it good and be glory. Watch what happened. To complete this situation, Jesus had to fulfill the prophecy of Isaiah that said he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. Jesus had to make that thing complete. So you got to understand, Asbury, on this Resurrection Sunday morning, the crucifixion was not just for Jesus. He wasn't completing it for himself, but he was completing it for you and for me. He did it so you can remember who he is. He did it so you know for yourself that yes, it was worth him dying for. Because he knew all of us would sin and fall short of the glory of God. He knew we would miss the mark in this life. Jesus already knew we would get caught up with things that don't matter to him and forget about his life. So he had to make a huge impact on Calvary one Friday afternoon. But the good news is, uh, when I get to my moments of Calvary uh, in my little life, uh, when I get to moments where folk are trying to humiliate me, uh, slander my name, uh, challenge my integrity, uh, when you get to moments of Calvary in your life, Asbury, uh, no one can call on God. Uh, let God handle your situation uh, and give him all the glory uh, for the great things uh, he has done. Uh, I've learned to call on Jesus. I've Learn to call on my God. Yeah. 